What's up, everyone? You might watch the news and be convinced that things are getting worse and worse and worse, and the wheels are about to come off the car. The human race is doomed. In fact, one of the biggest questions I get as a pastor is this. Is this the great tribulation? Is this the end times? Are we doomed? Is America going down? Is the world going to be just messed up? Is overpopulation going to take over everything? Are, are we in big trouble? And there's no turning back. Well, I think the cause of this is something I call our addiction to disaster porn. Disaster porn is some ways more addictive than sexual porn. It's the news, it's our natural inclination to pay attention to bad news. Now, the Lord put that instinct in us to make sure we survive. We go for a walk through the woods and we hear a rustle, we wanna make sure that there's no predators out there. And if we're in a strange urban neighborhood in the middle of the night walking by ourselves, we ought to have our awareness raised and our spider sense tingling, so to speak. That's normal. But the media feeds on this natural inclination and instinct and gives us a constant barrage of bad news. And with today's satellite communication, it's possible to find bad news anywhere. Stuff that nobody was aware of 15, 20, 30 years ago. And we somehow did just fine. I really don't think we're headed into a massive disaster. Now, I can't predict the future. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I do know that some things are getting worse, but most things are getting better. The two people who've done the most actual scientific research on this are very famous public intellectuals. One of them is Hans Rosling. The other one is Steven Pinker. And I really encourage you to look at some of their YouTube videos and some of their writings, their books. I'm going to be reading here from Factfulness. And Factfulness is a book here by Hans Rosling. And it is about 10 reasons we're wrong about the world and why things are better than we think. Legal slavery. In 1800, 193 countries practiced legal slavery. And today there are three. Oil spills, 636 of them in the late 70s, and six of them recently. Uh, HIV infections, way down. Children dying before their fifth birthday. 44% of children died before their fifth birthday in 1800, and 4% today. Leaded gasoline, 193 countries had leaded gasoline in uh, 1980, and now there are three. Plane crash deaths per 10 billion passenger miles, 2,100 in the 1930s, and it's one now uh, per year. Deaths from disaster. Oh, disasters. There are just so many more than there used to be. Uh, 971 deaths a year. Um, in the 1930s, and an average of 72 deaths a year recently. Smallpox, countries with smallpox, 148 in 1850, zero in 1979, has been zero ever since. Share of the people in the world who are undernourished, 28% in 1970, 11% in 2015, and that might disappear according to the United Nations in the next 15 years. Nuclear arms, 64,000 nuclear weapons in 1986, 15,000 recently, and that is going down quickly. 28% of children in 1950 were involved in child labor, 10% now. Those are things that are getting better. And there's a whole bunch of other things that are getting better. Also, protected nature, 1900, 0.03% of the world's surface was protected nature, national parks, national forests, those kinds of places, nature preserves, 14% now. Women's right to vote, 1900, one country, 193 now. Uh, there, there's just so much good stuff. Literacy, 10% in 1800 of the adults in the world could read and write, 86% today. In 1816, 1% of the world was living under democracy, 56% today. There's just a share of the people in the world with protected drinking water, clean drinking water, 55% in 1980, 88% in 2015. Girls in school, 65% in 1970, 90% in 2015. 
Child cancer survival, 58% in 1970, 80% in 2010, and the list goes on and on and on. God did not create the world with certain doom for everything. People say, well, what about the book of Revelation? What about all the terrible stuff in there? Well, there's all kinds of good prophecies in the Bible, too, which we ignore. There's good ones, and there's bad ones, and prophets who warn us about bad things, and prophets who warn us about or tell us that good things are coming. The Bible also says that we will beat our swords into plowshares and we won't know war anymore, or that there'll be a highway between Egypt and Mesopotamia going through Israel and all of the Middle East will be worshiping together. Who ever pays attention to those prophecies? Because the Bible puts before us choices. The Bible doesn't just have one script that the human race is going to read and just going to go off to the end, like a play that somebody writes and we just read the lines. That's not how it works. God gives us especially in the book of Deuteronomy, blessings and cursings, life and death. Oh, that you would choose life. And we have choices. The whole Bible is calling us to make good choices for our lives and good choices as a human race. We can make those choices. We can make things better. Better is good. No one person can change the whole world. But most things are getting better. A few things are getting worse. We are by no means living in the great tribulation. I would invite you to take a potential that you might be addicted to disaster porn seriously, that you're drawn to bad news stories. I found myself drawn to this sort of a Gabby Petito story about her disappearing and just listening to this and watching this and ignoring all the good things that happen with young women just like her all over the world. Start paying attention to the good things. Mr. Rogers, when he was young, was watching something terrible on television and his mother said something very wise. Watch the helpers in these disasters. Watch the helpers and focus on the good things that are happening. I'm not in denial. I'm not saying that there aren't bad things happening all around us, but I hope that we will wake up to the fact that this is our Father's world, and he will get his way with creation, and he will get his way with people of faith who in their own way, you and me, make the world better one day at a time wherever we have a chance to improve what's going on around us. Improve your life. Improve the lives of others. Show love for other people. Encourage them. And don't discourage them by telling them that everything is falling apart and the wheels are coming off the wagon. That All that does is freeze people up and it makes them unable to do anything. Let's be people of faith. Let's be realistic about things that are challenging, the problems we're facing, but let's also be people who believe that God can have his will with the world if we cooperate with him to heal creation. That's the good news for today. I hope you will subscribe to this channel, and I hope that you will kind of browse through the 400, 500 teachings we've done during the pandemic. There's a rich treasury here, a library of Bible teaching, which we would invite you to look at, and that will empower and encourage your life. Take care, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow.